Hey there, Wastelanders! This is the first scenario of the three-part campaign, The Battle for Sargus Ironworks, for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Even though the campaign is written to take place after Sargus is cleaned out by the sole survivor, I thought it would be fun to reimagine it as the origin story of the Forge taking over the Ironworks. This is mainly because I've just gotten all of my Forged models painted up, and I wanted an excuse to put them on the table. We start out with Scenario 1, Find the Keys. Unsurprisingly, this scenario is set outside the ironworks. Both sides are trying to get to the single locked entrance located on the east side of the map. There are three ways to get into the door. Number one, if a model has strength 7 plus and a melee weapon, they can bash in the door with three successful strength checks. Number two, there is a terminal controlling the locks. Two successful computers checks will open it. And number three, there are three searchables on the field. One of them is the key. If a model finds the key, they can carry it to the door and unlock it. For the forces of the forged, we have Slag himself, leading from the front with a commander leader perk, an incinerator, a machete, and wearing his signature power armor. There's one generic forged with a flamer and a machete. Two psychos are ready to charge in with sledgehammers, a dose of fury each, and a single molotov to share. Rounding out the force, we have a scaver outlaw with a railway rifle and a machete. The forces of the Institute are trying to claim the ironworks for their own nefarious purposes. They are led by a courser with an Institute laser rifle and the gatherer leader perk. There are three trooper synths, each with an Institute laser rifle. One scientist wraps up the team with an Institute laser pistol and wearing their usual clean room suit. After everyone is set up, there are some clear lanes that are being set up. On the east side of the field, the Institute's scientist is set up to rush for the terminal, backed up by one of the troopers. On the raider side, the scaver outlaw is there as well. They're not as good at computers as the scientist, but they bring that railway rifle to the party. In the middle of the field, Slag and the generic forged are set up to push for either the searchables or the door, depending on what is needed. The courser leader and another trooper are prepared to do the same. The western side of the field has the final trooper lined up against both of the psychos, who are hoping to use their higher movement speed to go for the key objective. With an even number of models on each side, the Institute randomly gets the advantage for the first turn. The scientist jumps forward, but stays in cover since they can't get all the way to the terminal. The Ironworks is mine! screams Slag across the battlefield. He activates and gains two counting tokens for his commander ability. He heads up close to the nearest searchable, but can't reach it because climbing the tractor trailer counts as difficult terrain. The western trooper pushes forward with little regard for their own safety. The first psycho activates and moves up just in range of slag to get a prepare token from his commander ability. With her second move, she gets a bit closer to the trooper, but stays behind the stairs for cover. The next trooper moves up as well staying in cover. The scaver outlaw also moves up and grabs a prepare token from Slag. Realizing that they have line of sight, even if it's at long range, the scaver takes a shot with a railway rifle and it strikes through. Two damage, one third of the scientist's health taken straight away. The final trooper activates and takes a long range shot at Slag. It hits with three respectable damage, but with the bonus armor from the cover, it all gets blocked. The other psycho activates and jets forward, going for the potential objective there. The courser double moves up. They could have gotten a shot after their first move, but the Institute laser rifles really need to be at close range so they get an extra die to help push damage. Finally, the generic forged pushes up. The range on their flamer is pretty short, so they opt to stay in cover for the time being. This wraps up turn one. A few shots and some damage, but mostly just jockeying for position. Turn 2 kicks off. There is no Wasteland deck set up specified for this scenario, so I opted not to use any event cards. Advantage passes over to the Forged, and the first Psycho moves to check for a key, and it's a bust. With nothing else to do, they pop their Fury drugs and charge into the Trooper. The Courser activates next, and decides to put some shots into Slag, his first one hits, but only rolls one damage. Slag rolls a one on the armor die to block one, and the strong armor from the power armor takes the second. 
The Courser's second shot also hits for two damage and two armor break, leaving Slag with just one plus one armor. He rolls a two, so nothing blocked there, but the strong armor still kicks in, so he blocks one and takes one. Slag's first action is to climb up onto the trailer and check the marker. <laughs> oh shit, it's the key! With another action to go, Slag hops down and heads for the door. Now it's a straight-up race to see if the Institute can take him down before he gets there next turn. The next trooper activates and moves out of engagement with the Psycho. It takes a 4 damage swat in response, but blocks 2 of the damage with armor and only takes 2. The other Psycho had a reaction and moves up to at least close the distance. I realize now that the Psycho's charge distance is actually green, so even the reaction charge should have been shortened to red distance, which would have gotten her into contact. But eh, mistakes like that happen sometimes. With all that resolved, the trooper finally gets their shot in. It's a hit, but with only one damage and Slag having one strong armor against energy, nothing gets through. The other Psycho activates, and this time I remember that they have green charge distance so she's able to tie up one of the other troopers, which hasn't activated yet. Since she's now within Slag's presence range, she's also able to get a prepare token via his commander ability. The scientist realizes that there is a path to victory which doesn't involve shooting down an almost full health raider boss in power armor. They just need to get to the terminal, hack it once with their second action, and then hopefully get a quick action to hack the second time. It's a long shot but better than trying to get damage through with their terrible pistol skill. For moving up, though, they get another shot from the prepared Scaver Outlaw's railway rifle. It hits, and two more damage go through. They won't survive another hit like that. The hack is successful, but they don't get a quick action, unfortunately. Since it's now the Scaver Outlaw's turn, and they put through a huge four damage hit on the scientist, knocking them out of the game. With the Scaver Outlaw's other action, they move up and grab the other prepare token from Slag. Since the trooper can't shoot at Slag while engaged with the Psycho, it has to move out of that combat. For reasons that will be clear in a moment, it makes more sense to engage Slag in melee. Unfortunately though, a model can't charge from one melee into another, so the trooper has to just do a regular move. Fortunately for it, the distance reaches, at least. It does incur a parting blow from the Psycho, who thanks to the charge and the fury drugs, is rolling two black and two yellow dice. Despite a massive four damage, two armor break effect roll, she whiffs entirely. This is why you shouldn't do drugs, kids. However, since she also has a prepare token, she's also able to react to the trooper's movement with a quick action charge. This is why the trooper needed to engage slag in melee. If it hadn't, her charge would have tied it up in combat again, and it wouldn't have been able to attack slag at all. After all that, the trooper finally gets to make its attack with the rifle in melee. It's not the ideal situation, but the only choice it had. It does roll a hit and two armor break, which is decent. However, with only one damage on deck and Slag's power armor giving him a strong armor point against energy damage, it's blocked automatically. Tough luck for the Institute. On the other side of the board, the generic Forge moves up and hoses the other trooper down with their long range flamer shot. Both damage go through and the synth ignites. The last trooper to activate decides to stay in place and take two shots, even though Slag is just out of short range. The first shot hits, but with no extra damage rolled, the strong armor absorbs it. The second shot also hits, but to the same effect. Turn two draws to a close, and it looks like it's going to be an easy mop-up win for the forged. Turn three begins, and the Institute have one chance to drop Slag before he can use the key to unlock the ironworks. I run the math on the situation. With one damage on his power armor already, Slag has a total of nine hit points left. The only way for the Institute to not lose is for the trooper engaged with him to roll max damage twice. It is possible for the Institute laser rifle to end up with five damage, two on the black die, one each on the yellow and green, and one base. The first hit has to do max damage because one will be negated by the strong armor, but if that gets broken in the first hit, the second one could do the rest if it also maxes out. Oh, and uh, Slag has to fail out on both of these armor rolls, too. It's basically mathematically impossible, but anyone who's ever played a tabletop game knows that sometimes the dice can do crazy things. But this is not one of those times. The first hit is good, 
but only deals two damage. Slag rolls a two on his armor check and blocks them both, even before applying the strong armor. The second shot also hits for two damage and one armor break. Slag flubs the armor roll, so the strong armor blocks one, but the other goes through. His power armor isn't even broken yet. The ironworks is mine, he shouts as he reaches the door and unlocks it with the key. The trooper doesn't even get a parting blow because it's still engaged with the psycho. Having secured the win, Slag wheels around and blasts the trooper with a stream of flame from the incinerator. It doesn't really matter because the game is over, but setting one's opponents on fire really helps seal in the message. That's a wrap on this scenario. Honestly, it was a bit underwhelming. I think the biggest issue is with the scenario design. There's a 1 in 3 chance of the closest token being the key. It swung the advantage so hard in the direction of the forged, especially considering that Slag is fairly tanky. Though, if the Courser had picked it up, then it would have been similarly almost impossible to take him down. If I were to run the scenario again, I'd put all three of the potential key coat tokens on the west side of the board. I do like that there were multiple paths to victory, though. It's nice to have that flexibility in list planning. Even though these lists were balanced on caps, in hindsight I feel like I should have given the Institute better weapons. Institute laser rifles and pistols, with their single base damage, have a real difficulty putting damage through on armored targets. They have a chance to get a big roll, but in general consistency is way better. It feels wrong to give the Institute forces other weapons than the Institute weapons, and for these scenarios I try to keep things fairly thematic. I hope you enjoyed the report, even if the resolution was a bit underwhelming. Since this is only part one of the Battle for Sargus Ironworks campaign, I'll be going through the rest of the campaign as well. I'll always be playing the Forge myself, but I have different opposing forces planned for the battles to come, so keep an eye out for those down the road. And stay safe out there in the wasteland.